Do you find people pleasing males? Oh, men in feminine energy. This is the. <laughs> This is a massive problem, masculine energy and feminine energy, because it's not related to, to gender. We're androgynous. We have masculine and feminine. And what happens, you have a lot of masculine women. And I don't mean physically masculine. I mean in masculine energy. They're powerful. They're doing things for themselves. I don't need a man. That five-word mantra. And so men are subordinating in an unhealthy way. And when wo a woman is really powerful like that, how does it, what does a man do? You've got the polarity, okay? And you need to have that polarity because if you've got two negative poles, masculine and masculine, for example, you know, you, the attraction point can only come so far, but you can't ever really get connected. So one party has to switch. So either the woman goes into feminine or the man goes into feminine. And what we're seeing is men that are going so far into their feminine energy and this is about the biggest turnoff for a woman. Massively. And it's something I've found. There's, there's that and the, the opposite as well, where you have, I've got a lot of like female with clients or friends and I've spoken to them and they do very well. They're very driven. They're very yeah. hyper-masculine in, yeah. in terms of how they, they've almost, they're almost trying to be what they want their man to be. Of course. And this hyper-driven, hyper-successful, ch chasing money and they're intelligent. And like, you definitely like connect with them. You, it, you know, you admire what they're doing, but like for me, I'm a very, very masculine man and I, I run my own things and like, I'm very attracted to a very feminine woman. And I say that to them that it's like, they want a guy who's masculine, like these often yeah. hyper-masculine yeah. women want a guy who's like very masculine, he's very successful. And, but then, and then they, I often hear that they feel um, when they meet that guy, then they'll soften up and go into their feminine. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. As no. you know, it doesn't work that way. And, and really, the things that women care about in a relationship and how they would choose a partner are completely different to what a man would care about. You know, most men I know that, sure, they, they want a woman that they can have a conversation with and she's got, she's got energy. They, you know, they like the woman's vibe, mm. playfulness, mm. softness. They, they don't really care if she's a doctor, a lawyer, or, you know, or a shop assistant, it doesn't matter. As long as she's happy in herself, she yeah. brings in peace, she's not overly critical and demanding, and he doesn't care about those things that she's displaying, going, hey, well, look what a good catch I am, because I'm all the things that I want you to be. Exactly right. And, yeah. and being like... I find as a guy like uh, running businesses and, and things like that, it's so tough and everything's just combat. When you're in, with, with your work life, you want to c come home. You don't want combativeness at home. And I think it's not like we, we want someone. You want someone that can call you out in your shit. Of course. Not, not, a, not a absolute. And I think a lot of some women get confused with thinking it's like, oh, guys just want pushovers that just do whatever they tell. No, a, a higher value guy will want a woman to call him out in his bullshit. But still, they don't just want unnecessary conflict and combat. And competition. Yeah. It becomes competitive. So if you've achieved something and the woman perceives that what she's achieved is, you know, represents more value than what you've just achieved, it, this just creates a competition as well. And you're going to have clashes. And why would you want to clash in a relationship? No. Relationships are there to make us grow. Of course they're there to make us grow. So you do want a woman that's able to uh, communicate with you and bring you back when you've, you know, gone off somewhere and call you out on your shit, 100%. But that doesn't mean that there's a, there's a space where there's betterness. Well, I've been working just as hard as what you have and you need to do this for me because we've got to understand how uh, you know men's brains are wired and women's brains are wired and our you know testosterone estrogen you know th these have a play in a relationship and they have a place in a relationship as well and we've got to understand how men go from their, their workspace okay you know you, you come home from work when you're a successful man and you can't stay on this level you need to chill you need to shut down. And a woman won't say, mm, why am I doing all this stuff? You, know, you, you, I've got to do all this. I've been at work all day. Your, your systems are different. And people have no, they don't learn about that. 
How can I serve in my relationship? How can I make this relationship better? How can I get what I want by giving him what he wants? Because how can we collaborate in this relationship? Definitely. Am I, I have this discussion with most of my mates who are all married with kids. I haven't got, okay. I haven't got a family. Okay. So, um, but I've got a very heavy workload with, with, with my career and business. <laughs> and a lot of my, my role um, demands me to be very, very present and very alert and I can't come to work a bit tired and, and that sort of stuff. So I say to my I say to my married mates with kids, they all tell me the same thing. I said, when my time comes when I when I have a family, which I do want to have one, I I would be like if my partner obviously you know wasn't wasn't working and I had to be in my office at six thirty in the morning, I probably wouldn't want to be doing fifty fifty handovers with the kids during the nights midweek when I've got to be at work at 6.30 and be highly engaged. And they, I, they all say the same thing. They go, laugh at me and go, good luck when that happens. Okay. Ryan, this is such a, you know, and, and we can have a, a little smile about it, but this is such an important topic for couples to, to discuss. If you choose your partner and you know who they are and how they are, and if you're a successful driven man and you are achieving your goals and this is who you are and this is what you're doing if the woman that you choose doesn't understand that about you then you too shouldn't think about bringing children into the world because why would you hey this is who i am and this is where i'm going do you support that do you are you okay with that because having a family doesn't mean that i'm going to stop going where I'm going and if I'm going over here the person that you choose has to be right for you now and it has to be right for you in the future without the expectation that now you have to show up as a different person and put in and change the tack that you're on change the path that you're on you should be able to stay on the path that you're on and bring children into the world and have a an amazing family life but not with an unrealistic expectation that all of a sudden you're going to be you know mr mum half mm. the time it's not if that's not what you're signing up for yeah. that's not what you're signing up for and it would create like an enormous amount of resentment and i would i would get very and i, I would be someone that i mean i'd i really would want to be want to be a dad but i'd have i think it's about having that and the pattern i find with a lot of these guys that they're, they're not great communicators of you know, their expectations and what they want and their boundaries are wishy-washy as well. So they don't, and they, well, I say this to them and they go, hey, good luck, wait till you have kids and, and see how you go. Totally, but th th their boundaries were always wishy-washy. Yeah. Okay, because they weren't clear and they didn't communicate that, mm. hey, this is who I am. This is the path I'm on. This is where I'm going. Is that going to be, is that going to be good for you if we had children? Because it's... It's not going to change for me. This is who I am at my core. And women, and we can joke about it, spend their whole relationship trying to change the man. Women, men, they go into a relationship thinking, oh, please don't change, you know, because they fall in love with a woman for who she is. And then all of a sudden there's an expectation for you to change and do things the way that she does them because that's the right way, right? Do you find some women, they fall in love more with the potential of the man? Oh, totally. But if only he does things the way that I do them, if he could be more like me, he would be perfect. If he was different, he would be perfect. They're setting themselves up for failure, though. He's oh, <laughs> already failed. If, if you, and this is the, the important conversation that people need to have with each other when they're dating. What does parenting look like to you? What does... Uh, finance look to you you know what, what look like to you what, how do you manage your money how do you manage your your spare time how do you manage your health what do all these things mean to you and if we're not having these important conversations and we're choosing a partner and hoping that it's going to that it's going to grow and flourish and and be healthy how can it if you haven't even asked the important questions, what do you expect of me as a father, as a mother? And if that's not right for the person, they need to make that decision that, look, that's not aligned to who I am. That's not gonna work for me, babe. Well, that's who I am. And if she can't handle that or he can't handle that, 
Next, 